Minnie Minoso eats pieces of shit like Pete Rose for breakfast. <laughs> Welcome to Trivial Debates. You have no right to say well, that. it's a TV show. You have no right it's, to say that. It's a TV show, so you're not you're not comparing apples to apples. No, that's kind of true, I guess. Right. But uh, there, there's a pretty heavy uh, movie franchise, too, though. Yeah, and I think some of the Star Trek movies are better than Star Wars movies. Like Star Trek II, Wrath of Khan, is one of the best movies ever made. Let's move on. Okay. Let's get started. <laughs> Welcome to this week's edition of Trivial Debates, the ultimate pop culture challenge. We have some awesome new debates for you this week. Each week, our panelists will be judged and scored on their arguments for facts, passion, and creativity. And our panelists this week are... Eamon Mater. We got Eamon Mater, the is, kid. This is my And we got time. two old friends, first-time podcast guests. Depot. We got Rob Depot. Uh, Barry Gilbert. And we got Barry Gilbert. So these uh, guys are longtime friends of mine. Uh, we go back over a decade. We were curling teammates for a long time. And then so. there was supposed to be uh, McKenna. Yeah, McKenna flaked. You know, I'm just going to put it on there on the record. So, McKenna, I'll so remember I'm here. So, Eamon's filling in. You're weak, McKenna. Uh, how this show works. Uh, there are six rounds plus a speed round, which will be competed by our top two panelists. We got movies, television, music, sports, history, and a wild card. We want people to be passionate. We try not to be personally mean to each other, but uh, really, you know, it doesn't matter so much with this crowd. Keep in mind, you can also skip to a new debate by looking at the time indexes in the description and going to the battles that interest you the most. Uh, make sure to subscribe to our iTunes feed. Follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, can we Instagram. Do that, Rob? Can we just skip to the next? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's only for after. Uh, whether you're listening to iTunes or watching the YouTube version, uh, all links and information can be found in the description or at our website, TrivialDebates.com. And hey, make sure to check out our friends' podcast. Uh, we got Jim's Barbecue, which is jimsbbqpod.com. And our friend Jody will be starting a new YouTube series called Retro Rants in the, few first, or in the next few weeks, which will be all about uh, old-timey games. So What's the launch for, date? Yeah, I, well, you have to ask Jody that. But it's oh, in the works, right. and... We're trying to get people excited about that show, so uh, you know, let's um, let's all support Jody when that finally launches. Okay, guys, you guys ready to battle? Yep. Let the battle begin. All right, we're starting off with movies, and for the movie round, we're going to be uh, you know talking about an oldie but a goodie, the the, the 1977 film Slapshot, and uh, which is a film that's uh, you know near and dear to the hearts of Rob and Barry. And McKenna, but he's not here. So Eamon's filling in. Yeah. We showed Eamon a couple scenes of the movie uh, in advance. So while he hasn't seen the whole film, he does know a little bit about it now. Yeah. So it's a little outdated for Eamon. Yeah. It's a little. It's even a little outdated for me because, like, as much as I like the movie, it's like it's very much a '70s movie, and it feels kind of slow in parts. But you know, uh, that's just the way they did films in the time. So plot. It's, Plot building. <laughs> it's just like it's like the lack of score in some parts, and you know, there's just some things I don't like. Is there enough it. Hollywood action there for you, Dave? Yeah, it's just it's not like today's movies, but yeah. it's a good mil- It's a good film, a great hockey film, one of the originals, I think. And uh, Bar- the- Barry and I probably got drunk watching this movie more than any other movie through our twenties. Absolutely, so that's yeah. why it's close to our hearts. Right. One of the well, sorry, I'm gonna say the okay, best yeah, sports movie of all time. I'm gonna put. Well, I, I, I think Goon's actually a better film, but. Uh, have you seen Goon? Yes. That's got so many great fucking lines in it. It's so awesome. Uh, maybe it's a better comedy, but it's not a better film. Yeah. I don't know. I, well, for semantics, we're talking Slapshot tonight, and uh, we're talking about who the funniest character is in the movie, because it's a it's a great comedy from the 1970s starring Paul Newman. We're going to be starting with Rob. And uh, Rob, what do you got? I said Reg Dunlop, the star of the film. That's uh, Paul Newman's character. That's Paul Newman's character. <clears throat> okay, why is he the funniest? Uh, player coach. Play player coach Reg player Dunlop coach, yeah. uh, and captain, right? And captain. No, no, he was not the captain of the team. Oh, Ned Braden was the captain, correct? I don't think so. The the Chrysler plant dude. What's was his he? name? I think is the captain. Huh. Um, Learn something every day. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, we were drunk most yeah, of the yeah, time right. when we watched <laughs> right, it. Right, right, right. Uh, Dunlop was the funniest because he was involved in the most scenes. Um, 
he was involved with most of the key characters. He was just there delivering kind of the straight lines. He was the dry guy in most of the funny scenes. So while he didn't really have many of the catchphrases, uh, he was uh, very, very involved in all of the humorous subplots. I think you put that very well, Rob, which uh, (laughs) actually identifies him as the setup man. He's the setup man. He's not the funny guy. He's not the punchline guy? No, he's not the punchline guy. He sets him up really well. He does. Uh, he's, he's an amazing part of the story. He is the story, if you ask me. But he's not the funniest. Pure funny. Uh, my who, first, who is? My first instinct was to say uh, Morris or Mo, who's the, uh, the crazy messed up guy that uh, fucked the barmaid in uh, FLA <laughs> and uh, right, right. Uh, of gorgeous snatch fame. But... Honestly, he's kind of got his one-liners, and is kind of you move on. But in general, I think the funniest pure entity in the movie is Killer Dave Carlson. Dave's a killer. Dave's a mess. Dave's a mess. That's on my Twitter handle. Follow me on Twitter at Super Dave Mater, uh, and you'll see right Shameless there. Shameless plug. Shameless plug, and you'll <laughs> see right in my description. Dave's a killer. Dave's a mess, which uh, you repurposed for me and describing me and my. Some of my antics. Because and, the first time we met you, I, you were a mess. Was I a killer yet? <laughs> you were far from a killer. <laughs> I think we've always said you're a killer, but we followed it up every single time with you're a mess. You're a mess, yeah. So uh, you take it how you want. All but right. uh, it definitely has a pretty good uh, circle back to exactly what you've been over your uh, existence with us. But anyways, back to Killer Dave Carlson. Right. He... Uh, He's not a pure funny person. And I think that's the genius of it all, is that everything that happens around him, about him, of him, to him, is just gold. Like Dave's it. a killer. He, he he goes out there and he, he he wants to be the tough guy. He wants to get in the, the face of the, the biggest and baddest of the other guys. He just can't hack it. And he just ends up being a mess. Um, he, Jeez, at the beginning of the movie, he's, he's up in the press box because he's he's out that game and you know they're assuming he busted his knee up in a game last week and he's like no he just has a cold like just everything about him just resonates comedy and funny because he's opposite just, character he's just he's just a joke he's and just, i think that's what makes him the funniest character okay let's get mm-hmm. to amons and then we'll uh, we'll have a little bit of a, a fight here all right um i don't actually know his name but it's the goalie um, Danny Lemieux. Danny Lemieux. Yeah. Danny Lemieux. All right. Why is he the funniest? Uh, he's the funniest character because um, he's the funniest character because he kind of just portrays this ridiculous guy who he doesn't really think about uh, like how something might disturb someone or like <laughs> hurt or like make someone think like. <laughs> um, and what does he do to disturb people? Like. During one of the scenes, he's talking in an interview about like penalties, and he's like, "Yeah, you can't like you can't hit him with a stick." So, and then he hits like you didn't want to be that reporter. You no. didn't want to get hit with that stick. <laughs> no, you get the spear, get the hook. Yeah, and it's just it's so so ridiculous. It's slap it's slapstick, slap shot slapstick, slap shot slapstick. <laughs> Ironic. And it makes for um a ridiculous character that's like very cartoonish, kind of a little bit. All right. Okay. Rookie sensation, Danny Lemieux. Danny Lemieux. He's uh, some English pig with no brains in his head. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Just some English pig. (laughs) Okay. um, Rob, uh, why is is Reg Denlop funnier than Killer Carlson or Danny Lemieux? Um, Did you see him in the scene where he was only wearing underpants? Yes. I rest my case. You thought that was funny? (laughs) That that sounds... um, that sounds very. Uh, hmm. yeah. I don't know how to put it. <laughs> well, I, I, uh, I was on the edge of my seat there. Yeah. <laughs> Wiry little chicken legs in 1970s underpants. But he was a sex symbol, Paul Newman. He was. He, he also Somehow. had a salad dressing. Like, wait, was, <laughs> <laughs> like that doesn't mean anything about his funniness as a character in the movie. Um, but it was. Yeah. If walk- anything, he just sets up better characters. I, that's what I'm saying. He's a setup man. He he. He he brings the funny out of everyone else, which is gold. I'm not for the other characters it, though. It, it, it it's perfect. But not for and him. What's make the what makes the movie good? But him himself is not the funniest. Yeah, he guy. just sets up the funniness for the other characters. Maybe my answer was trying to set you guys up. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Well, does Danny Lemieux have any interactions with uh, Reg Dunlop? 
Sure. I can't remember. I can't either. He was his coach. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that not too much if I recall. Um, so he never set that guy up. That guy's funny on his own. Like he's funny yeah, yeah, yeah. without that. Uh, There's a funny scene in a bar where um, Danny Lemieux oh, and the coach yeah, yeah. are sitting there, and uh, Reg Dunlop asks him uh, if he bet, would bet him to go and talk to a girl. And he goes and talks to the girl. Turns out it's his ex-wife. But Danny Lemieux's eyes roll back in his head because he doesn't think that he could pick the girl up. So that worked. Hmm. Yeah, but who uh, did that work for? Where's the comedy there? It's, the ex-wife. It's the classic. <laughs> no, uh, that 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 joke. It's the of classic fault. setup uh, in terms of winning a bet. It's not. It's not comedic genius. But I, I that I, to my recollection, that's the only one-to-one okay. interaction with the two of them. But G- give uh, me a little bit more on Dave, uh, Dave or Killer Dave. Uh, Dave Carlson. Killer Carlson. Yeah. Uh, he just funniest he just, thing he did in the movie. The funniest thing he did in the movie. Yeah. I, I think that there, there is no funniest thing he did. He is the funny. Right. Well, it's, it's, it's himself. He he can't take it, but he jumps in every single time. He's a glutton for punishment. That's why he's a killer. No, no, no. <laughs> he's a mess. Because he jumps in there, but it just go, falls flat. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and the whole premise behind the team becomes this rough, tough, goonish, uh, beat all, beat up all. And... and Dave's a mess, just ends up a mess every single time. I give him credit. He comes back every time for more, and that's just, I think, the the genius and the funny that is is him because he doesn't realize it. He doesn't get it. He doesn't understand that he is a mess. Eamon, any rebuttal? Um, I just think that in I, – I think your character is probably a really good character, but I think that my character, he emanates pure um, ridiculousness. Uh, more so than than Killer Carlson. Yeah, I think that because of like he kind of has a character who is wacky and he's always all over the place during the movie. Mm-hmm. So I think that he's a really good character for it, and I think it just makes him better than Killer Dave Carlson. But Carlson's a character too. Mm. Okay, you lose. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you had such a setup there. All right, uh, I'm giving it to Barry. The round is going to yeah. Barry. That's kind of right. Okay, all right, so Barry's one up right now. All right, television round. All right, we're starting off with what's the best sitcom of the 1980s? Uh, obviously, you two were alive for it. You had some of your formative <laughs> years. I was only born in 83. Eamon was not even a twinkle in my eye yet. But... The beauty of Netflix and YouTube and all kinds of things has allowed us to go back and watch all these old shows. And Eamon's familiar with quite a few of those uh, programs because I've subjected them to him. Because I watched a lot of you them. You made it sound like I didn't like them. You didn't like all of them. No, that's true. Yeah. But remember Night Court? That was good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, we're going to start with uh, – let's start with Eamon this round. Uh, all right. What's, uh, what's your favorite sitcom of the 1980s? My favorite sitcom of the 1980s was Perfect Strangers. Which was uh, the prequel to? Uh, uh, it was the uh, well, Family Matters was a spin. Yeah, Family Matters, which no one really cares about. What are you talking about? Everyone cares about Family Matters. Uh, Is that Urkel? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But it was a good show. It was. Yeah, like except for Urkel. Right. Even Urkel had some endearing moments. Anyways, I think Perfect Strangers is really good because it has the whole. Standing uh, tall. Family Matters came out of Perfect of Strangers. Yep. Really? Huh? Yeah. St- yeah, because Harriet Winslow worked at the new at the the newspaper where Falky and Larry worked, oh. and then that became Perfect Strangers or Family Matters rather. No idea. All right. Um. <laughs> so the idea of Perfect Strangers is the whole your cousin who's this foreign guy comes to live with you in your that you don't know. Yeah, and antics ensue, <laughs> and they do. <laughs> what kind of antics? Uh, you know, you know, like um, there was the one time where. <laughs> Is that kind of like your roommate, Eamon? <laughs> the foreign guy that came to stay with you. <laughs> Benny he, and antics really. ensue. Benny, Benny, is Benny bottom bunk or top bunk? He's bottom bunk. He's bottom bunk. Oh, yeah, it's good for you. Mm. Um. <laughs> <laughs> There's the one time where Balky is making Larry apologize. Balky. So, Balky. Balky. Not Balky. 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 Balky is making Larry apologize, so he makes him do 
the forgiveness dance. Yeah, you yeah. like that part? Yeah. Yeah, there was some there was some great moments with Perfect Strangers. Yeah. Anything else to say? Um, no. Okay. Rob, uh, I went with Cheers, one of the most uh, important and seminal uh, sitcoms of all time. Where everybody knows your name. Everybody knows your name. Some of the Where most memorable characters of all name. time. Uh, speaking of spinoffs, Frasier came out of that as well. Um, it was Frasier was better. Wow. That Frasier wow. was better than Cheers. Did you watch Cheers? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I like how he goes like into shame mode. <laughs> when, he, when he gets called out on yeah, something. Yeah, that's true. Wow. <laughs> I, I'm done talking now. What right. about, Cheers. What, what about it? Well, it was it was a cultural it was a cultural phenomenon in the 80s. I don't know if you remember because you were too young, probably. No, I watched a lot of Cheers. I watched a shit lot of te- Cheers. When the a shit lot. When the uh, when the final episode aired, um, they actually broadcast it at the Sky Dome. And there was fifty thousand people in the dome watching the final episode of Cheers. That's was how really that's how important it was. It was, that's how it was important our it was. generation Seinfeld. Does Sam end it with Diane or with uh, Chrissy Alley at the end? Which one does he go with? Oh well, well Diane's earlier, so yeah, Chrissy she, Alley was after. But Chris, Diane didn't come back. Oh, she did, didn't she? I don't, I don't know. recall the plot twists. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, any notable characters you want to mention? Sure, there was. Uh, Probably my favorite character of all time, but he was only there the first uh, few episodes, or the first few seasons, I mean, was Coach. Right, he died. Uh, Woody Harrelson replaced he him. He did die, he died and that brought in Woody Harrelson. So. so then you also had um, the two main female characters. So you started with Diane, and then you had Kirstie Alley come in. Um, but then, of course, you had Norm. Uh, Norm. And then uh, uh, Norman you, Cliff. You can't forget Rhea Perlman. Norman Cliff and Carla. Right, Carla, and you had Frasier, and S- it was just... Strong cast. Extremely strong cast. Great writing. Well, Ted Danson. We can't forget Ted Danson. Yeah. Uh, he was a baseball player, too. Isn't that he, his, was a, that... he was an alcoholic baseball player who bought a pu- uh, bar after his career was over uh, in Boston. He played for the Red Sox. That Mayday. Was, and, uh, yeah, and it's even to this day, it's a cultural icon because if you go visit Boston... Um, they've turned the Bull and Finch pub into Cheers, which is what it was based on. So you can go in there. I've been there twice now. You can go in, have a pint, get your souvenirs. And um, from the outside, it's the, it is the exterior shots that they used. Um, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool to see in person. Okay. Barry. Uh, that probably wasn't very yeah. good. But is that Dukes? Dukes a hazard, my friend. <laughs> That See, wasn't some, very good. somebody got it. The General Lee. <laughs> uh, the General Lee. You can't go wrong with the General Lee. Bo and Luke Duke. Um, yeah. I went with Dukes of Hazard because um, I, I felt like it was a time in our lives where, and, and I, I don't know, maybe Cheers for me was maybe at the end of the 80s when we were a little bit older, but Dukes of Hazard, I think, was just a fun, entertaining, uh, good time. And it's the show I've seen the least of these three. Yeah. Um, but it's about two. Me too. It's about two cousins, and they're trying to run from Which one is the, the sheriff most? or something. They they're, they are they are uh, uh, whiskey runners or booze runners or whatever you want to call it. Moonshiners uh, back in the day, in the southern states, and running from the law like the law never won. Yeah. So. Uh, how's, the, how's the theme song go? It's like they're just good old boys. Just a good old boys. boys. Never mean to Never no harm. Never need me. <laughs> no harm. Never mean to yeah. no harm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So Dukes of Hazard. So <laughs> yeah. So they've got a crooked sheriff and they got a crooked mayor and the 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 actual moonshine runners are the heroes of the story, and actually doing right by most people, except the law. As I recall, they couldn't leave like the county because they were on parole or something. Yeah, there was something about that. Yeah. Um, so they yeah, which was and then they and 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 hey, people still talk about Daisy Dukes. What's Daisy Dukes? She was the other cousin, right? Yeah, but what are Daisy Dukes? Now? Yeah. Uh, it's like a good type of chicken wing, isn't it? <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> That's the most so amazing said, what answer I've ever Dukes? heard. Well, I, 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 I wish I could chew on them Daisy Dukes. <laughs> I know that Daisy, Daisy Dukes are short, short jean cutoff oh, shorts. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. The chicks wear You still or talking about Daisy Dukes. chicken wings. wings. Or chicken wings. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's a flavor at Wild Way, guys. So so there's there's <laughs> many. Daisy uh, Dukes. Calm down to Wild Way. <laughs> there's many, there's many dynamics to, to such a, a simplistic show. And I think um, the simple fact that they re-ran them. Granted, it was on um, TNT, TNT or something, yeah. TBS, T- TNT, I think. Okay. Um, they reran it when we were in university, which was like bringing a whole new generation of fans and and fans back to what was <laughs> the Duke's mm-hmm. Hazard. I wasn't allowed to watch it when I was a kid. Yeah, Why well, not? my parents thought it was bad. What about it? Bad influence on my behavior. I'm because sure. they were rebels. They were. They were bad. They were going against the law. Hey, don't forget, this is a guy that got uh, worked driving a car for his part-time job at a at a pharmacy that would get calls into the pharmacy and calls from our friend's parents to his parents saying, "I saw Rob on two wheels going around our street corner." So I can understand maybe where your parents would say that would be a bad influence on you. But you, I didn't watch it, so how would I know? Well, yeah, I guess, right? Uh, so I guess I would have been pulling jumps. So you would have been, yeah, if you had have watched it, you would have been uh, wrecking cars and running over shit, I guess. I don't know. I just do that now. Yeah. That's it. What else were you allowed to watch? <laughs> Dukes of Hazzard? And... Uh, anything edgy. That was edgy? That was considered edgy? Sue, Sue oh, DePodesta was pretty Was strict. Cheers considered edgy? No, Cheers was okay. Because there was no... Uh, it, actually, what it came down to was violence. It, door slam. I was just, oh, it was probably the wind blew the door closed. Um, it was a- anything right. violent, anything... Um, violence is off limits, but alcoholism rocks. Yeah, yeah. Alcoholic <laughs> ex-baseball players, okay. Welcome to my childhood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, man, uh, can you tell me why Perfect Strangers is better than Cheers and Dukes of Hazard? Because uh, Perfect Strangers is just... Uh, you know what? I'm going to concede. I think that... <laughs> you don't even see these shows. Concede? Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, can I have a second? <laughs> sure. All right. Um, He's going to edit it later. Um, anyways, Perfect Strangers is better than uh, Cheers and the Dukes of Hazard because... Okay. Rob, uh, why is uh, Cheers yeah, right. better than uh, Perfect Strangers and the Duke of Hazard? Dukes of Hazard? Why is it better? Uh... Everything about it. Uh, more famous cast. Everyone who, uh, all the major characters that were in it went on to uh, bigger and better things. Um, I, I would argue that most of the major cast members today, still 20 years after uh, it finished airing, are still known um, kind of in the celebrity sphere, if you want to call it that. Mm-hmm. Um, well, Woody Harrelson's still huge. Woody Harrell's, like, but even even Christy like, Alley does a lot of Weight Watchers commercials. Sure, she's in the Public Eye. Ted Danson's had four, five, six other sitcoms, movies. Um, just everyone involved in it has gone on to bigger things. Um, like I said before, it w- it's a cultural phenomenon. It pr- it probably was the biggest show of the 1980s. Uh, for sure, it was the the ratings leader mm-hmm. through its time. Was there any uh, Skydome um, viewings of the last episode of Dukes of Hazard? Not that I recall. Maybe an <laughs> exhibition stadium <laughs> on the pixel board, uh, but I don't recall. I, yeah. I think they did that in the Georgia Dome <laughs> down in Atlanta, where uh, things were a little bit yeah. different. I uh, like I hear you, Rob, and I think I think Cheers is a better show. The only problem is I think the time frame that we're looking at being the 70s and the age and the context, I think... I'm pretty sure it's the 80s. Yeah, 80s. Shit, the 80s. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, that's... No, I meant meant to say the 80s. Um, And our age and the context by which we were watching these shows at the time, I think the older generation would appreciate a more likelihood of giving cheers the nod. But I think especially in the early days, the age that we were, um, I think the fun fun nature and craziness of car racing, car, car racing, car crashing was more where we were at uh, in terms of the context of uh, the age parameters we were in. Well, the, da- the dad are, uh, on Smallville, Jonathan Kent, he was uh, one of the guys from Dukes of Hazard, the Bo Duke. Oh, yeah? He went on to do that. 
What's Smallville? It was a Smallville. Yeah, is a Smallville is like a crappy show. Superman show. Oh. Um, yeah, good thing I didn't ask any comic. Like I was asking for like uh, suggestions that uh, for questions from my friends, and they're like, "Ask them what's better, Marvel or DC." I was like, "These guys aren't gonna know." <laughs> so, no, no. Uh, anyway, um, Marvel, I've, I've made my you. ruling, and the the point goes to Rob. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Ouch. okay, moving on. Music round. Who was the greatest hair band frontman? A hair band being anybody who, you know, has long hair and kind of rocked it out. Uh, there's lots of examples, and we're going to explore a few of them. We're going to start with Barry this time. Nobody. They're all <laughs> shit. No one. That's no hair band is stood the-, the test of time. It remains popular, really. Um, probably has any money left. <laughs> is anybody anymore? Uh, like, they're they're all... Crap! I don't think their songs stand the test of time, and uh, they can suck my ass. Okay, we're gonna come back to you, and we're gonna talk about their answers All right. briefly. Eamon, what's yours? Uh, I picked Bon Jovi, and the reason I picked Bon Jovi was because, well, actually, the question says band frontman, but the frontman, oh, John, the fr- John Bon Jovi's the frontman. Right. Yeah. Uh, I just think that he has an amazing voice, and he can hold, like he can, he's. Um, how do I describe it? He's a good singer. Yeah, yeah. You can't like it's even <laughs> unproportionate. You can't even describe it. The level of like he has, he can hold a tune, and I'll always listen to his songs. I feel like um, that uh, as somebody who didn't grow up in this era of hair bands, yeah. uh, why does that that one appeal to you? Because um, I actually listened to a couple of their songs. I've listened to. Um, uh, you know, uh, you're halfway there, living on a prayer. Yeah, living on a prayer. <laughs> and um, oh my gosh, I can't yeah. remember the name of any of them. Hey, I mean, you're halfway there, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyways, uh, uh, always uh, uh, better roses. Yeah. I don't know. They got a bunch of shit. Uh huh. And I just feel like, um, they have, like they, they produce they produced like an amazing style of music that I think was iconic back in their era and it's what i like about old music a lot is that it's very creative and yeah okay well we'll take that all right so the latest thing i've seen from bon jovi is a shitty commercial about the fact that you can rewind to the beginning of tv shows so he he's crap care so to, care to respond yeah he's crap <laughs> that was that was after the his music career that, that was th- after the music mm-hmm. career so didn't stand the test of time Rob, what do you got? Well, I'd like to start by thanking Barry for conceding this one right <laughs> off the bat. It's a great Sweet. way to start it off. Yeah. Um, uh, I took this question a completely different way because I didn't really read it as necessarily uh, pertaining specifically to musical talent. The question was, who's the greatest hair band frontman? That's right. Uh, ne- doesn't necessarily have to do with the songs or the talent level. So I picked... No, it's, uh, more, and, it's more about the person, really. Well, it, it, all-encompassing, uh, which is why I chose Gene Simmons' A Kiss. Um, while not my favorite band of all time, if you're looking at Frontman and you're looking at Gene Simmons and considering him from a business point of view, definitely the first band to ever really take themselves from a musical act and turn themselves into kind of a cultural phenomenon. Um, they were the first to... Uh, do a lot of merchandising. Mm-hmm. No band had really done any merchandising up to that point. And um, now, decades and decades later, they're still everywhere. You can still buy Kiss everything. Um, uh, they, I don't know if you can buy Kiss everything. They're kind of something that some people remember. I wouldn't say everyone remembers them, though. Like a lot of people. Like who? Like you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Sample of one? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Just but, just from a just from an uh, from a 360 point of view, uh, I think by far Kiss has been the busy, biggest success commercially for a hair band. There there are no other hair bands that really stand out as huge uh, cultural and commercial commercial successes uh, to the degree that they are. I feel like I have to ask this question though. Isn't is Gene Simmons really the front man of Kiss? Isn't it? Paul Stanley? Just two lyricists. So right. they, they shared the lead singing duties. 
Right. Yeah. I but he was all. But he's also considered kind of the de facto leader of the band. Yeah, I can see that. You can call him leader of the band, I guess. Okay, it's a stretch because he's not. He doesn't sing most of the songs, but he's. Um, you also said frontman. You front didn't man. necessarily say lead singer. That's so true. That's what I think of when I say frontman. But yeah, true. But the question, the the phrasing. So of I the think question, what he's saying is, Rob, that you picked the wrong person in the band. When yeah, you chose Gene Simmons. Nothing wrong with Kiss. I'm just wondering. Well, it, you know, that I'll let these guys. And and where is Gene Simmons now, anyway? Oh, wait, sorry. He's still doing a lot. <laughs> I, I'm joking. Yeah. And I, actually, th- that's probably my biggest point, <clears throat> is that um, he married Shannon Tweed, which to uh, 11-year-old Rob was, uh, <laughs> like, my number one. So <laughs> the fact that he married Shannon Tweed it makes him the best front man of all time, period. Canadian, too. Yeah, it's... Uh... Yes, I, I, I uh, neglected to think of someone like him or, or Kiss in terms of my commentary that they're all bullshit and they never did anything, um, which is, is a fair point in terms of Gene Simmons. But then it goes back to what Dave was saying. Is he really the front man? I don't know. Um, he's become quite the businessman now. and Definitely the business driver of it. And yeah, he's definitely a lyricist on some things for sure. Okay, well, anyway, so you think that Bon Jovi, Kiss, is all, it's all shit? Well, I I just don't You better think, not give him the point for that. I don't think that the front man of a hair band is great. still qualifies as anything fantastic. Anybody? Why? Because they don't resonate over time. None of uh, that music, as far that as... That wasn't the question. Yeah. I well, know. It, we're, we're, it's kind of an abstract thing. It's my thing. reason as to why they're not worth... Um, having a, a best one because they don't they don't stand the test of time. Their music doesn't resonate. There's no uh, unless you want to talk about a 39 year old woman that says, "Holy shit, I saw them in grade seven. Wow, let's go to a bit. let's go to a show." But they don't really give a shit. It's not like their lives are impacted by this music, and it's not like it's great music that I don't think any of them are worth being. That wasn't Anything the question. Anything to celebrate. That wasn't the question. No. Nope. The well, question. The question is. It says who's the best. I said none of them. It actually says who's the greatest. Who's uh, the greatest? Yeah. Right. So none you, of them. They're not to, worth talking about. So you have to consider, in the context of music. But you, it, it, the question wasn't asked in the context of music. Yeah. The question was asked. Well, I, t- I took a different spin on. It. I said they're all bullshit and they don't. We don't really need to talk right. about any of them. All right. Uh, got it. And uh, let's move to Eamon. Okay, right. so we essentially got here between you two. You don't like when I get angry, Dave? No, I do. I especially like when you get angry. <laughs> uh, uh, I, so I'm out? I'm out? No, you're not. I didn't say you were out. All right. Uh, but between these two. I feel like it's going they, that they way. Have, <laughs> they have the same argument against you, so it's kind of pointless. So I, I kind of just want to hear Bon Jovi, John Bon Jovi right. versus Gene Simmons. All right, what I'm going to say... And how you define which one's greater. Yeah. You said that just based on the recognizability that Kiss is better, but the problem is that there are a lot of recognizable people, people in this world who are in music who are really bad. Justin Bieber's recognizable. Are you saying that he's good because he's recognizable? No, he isn't. Are you saying that uh, like a lot of modern singers are good because they're recognizable? No. The thing with John Bo- Bon Jovi is that they have actual like singing talent. And I actually argue that they have a good singing voice, but you just say that they're memorable. Not well, right. tell me, why is, do you think Bon Jovi's a better singer than uh, Gene Simmons? Because I've actually listened to Bon Jovi's songs. You've never listened to a Kiss song? I don't think so, Gene no. Gene Simmons doesn't sing. He's like a backup singer. He doesn't sing. Even when he's the singer, he doesn't sing. He just sticks his tongue out and fucking... You don't like any of this music, so h- how, are, how are you <laughs> judging it now? <laughs> well, I, I guess if I'm going to be loser already... I'm going to stand on the side of Eamon because Bon Jovi was actually a musical talent, I guess. But I'm, I, on that second thought, I almost don't think of him as a hairband guy. But whatever. Bon Jovi. John Bo- yeah, Bon Jovi has to be considered hairband. Back when they were all frosted tips and acid wash jeans. Oh, yeah. Like, um, which I would much rather take the space suits and the black and white face paint. What's that, that one? I'm a cowboy on a yeah, steel horse. Yeah, no, it was... Uh, it, it's music made for 42-year-old women who stay at home all day long and do laundry. But they used to be 20-something. So, yeah. so there's 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 another point why Bon Jovi's better. His music has stood the test of time much better than Kiss. You go to, uh, you go to a, a cougar bar now, who are they going to play more of? Bon Jovi or Kiss? Bon Jovi every night of the week. All right, I'm, gi- I'm giving it to Eamon. Sweet. 
Taken down by a 13 year old. You can't be an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> they won't let me win. I know that much. No, no, I'm impartial. I'm impartial. He argued that the best. And he had yep. the best candidate, I'd say, for the question. All right, so we're going to be moving on to the sports round. And our question this week is Who is the best baseball player ever? We're going to start with Rob. Mini Minoso. <laughs> All right. Who is he? He had one at bat. <laughs> Minnie Minoso played uh, m- most of his career with the Chicago White Sox. Most of his career. It, it, no, he is the only professional baseball player to play at least one game in his 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s. Interesting. So he played a Major League Baseball game in his 70s. You might say he's the Gordie Howe of baseball. Is that what you would say? Best. Best. You might say. Mario Best Lemieux. player ever. How did he play into his 70s? How is that possible? Because he's the best ever. What position did he play? Outfield. Outfield, okay. All right. Did he was, play he play, was he playing at a Little League game? No, he played for the White Sox in his 70s. He, he only played for the White Sox? Uh, he bounced around a little bit. Yeah. Um, I'm just telling you what I know. Mini Minosa. Mini Minoso. Minoso. I don't know. I've never heard of him, but... Dave, he was a promotional stunt. A gag, if you will. Yeah. Was he? I don't know he anything was, about him. He was so short that pitchers couldn't pitch to him. That's Eddie Geidel. Isn't that Minnie Minoso? No. Can you show me a picture? No? Can Eddie you show me a picture of Minnie Minoso? <laughs> yeah, what is a pitcher going to do for you? Well, move on. Uh, move on, and I'll find some researcher for you. All right. Okay. Uh, let's go into Barry. Uh, Ted Williams is the best baseball player ever. Ted Williams. <clears throat> Who's Ted Williams? He is the last player ever to hit 400 in a season. Okay. 406, which I believe will never, ever be done ever again. Season average? Season average. So what what does that do for you, Eamon? Um, what did seeing a picture of him do for you? He was like, hey, he's black. <laughs> um, it didn't, didn't really do much. Him. I just wanted to see how tall he was. Hmm. So you, you were, made you that were, comment about it. You were hanging on to what I was saying, which apparently was false. Uh, is he still alive? Uh, when did he start? Mini passed away on March 1st, 2015. Oh, okay. So At the age of 91. RIP Mini Minoso. Ted uh, Williams. But he had a career batting average of 298 with 186 <clears throat> home runs and 1,023 RBIs. That's pretty good. Played, really? for, played for the Indians, White Sox, Cardinals, and Senators. Was a nine-time All-Star, three-time Gold Glove winner, three-time AL stolen base leader, and his number nine has been retired by the Chicago White Sox. Interesting. Well, can you tell me what? Um, can you tell and me also, what sorry, years this sorry, all happened in the? And inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1996. So he's a Hall of Famer. Is Ted Williams a Hall of Famer? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Borderline. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Borderline. I don't know a lot about him. Uh, like. uh, well, if, if Rob's going to rhyme off career highlights like that, I might as well. Yeah. So nine-time All-Star, Rob. Ted Williams, 19-time All-Star. Two, Overkill. Two-time AL MVP. Two-time Triple Crown winner. Do you know what Triple Crown is, Dave? Yeah. Yeah. Um, six-time batting champion. Four-time home run leader. Four-time AL RBI leader, uh, Hall of Famer, Major League Baseball All-Century Team, Major League Baseball All-Time Team, uh, MLB record 482 career on base percentage. Wow. The man could hit, and I think that no one else will ever hit 400 ever again. And the point of hitting four, four hits out of 10 at-bats just the simple fact of getting on base, making things happen, being able to score runs, but also producing runs yourself, as we saw as a as a triple crown winner, he he drives in runs, he hits home runs, and he uh, has the batting average. So he's the complete package. Uh, he played in right field, I believe, and just the best pure hitter in the game of baseball. Did he win the World Series? Did you, did you say, I, don't I don't know that he ever won the World Series. Incorrect. That's a good he did not. He never he won. Did not. The Red Sox didn't win oh, the yeah. World yeah, Series yeah, yeah. between 1918 and 2000 and whatever the hell. And he they only played on the Red Sox. Correct. Okay. All right, Eamon. Okay, so I picked uh, Pete Rose. Why? Because Pete Rose, uh, at the time, was one of the best uh, baseball players there was. He has 303 batting average. Uh, 4,256 hits, which at the time was the record. 
He beat Ty Cobb for it. He had 160 home runs. And still the record. What? Is it still the record? Probably. Dep- Look it up. It depends how you want to deal with each of them. Oh, yeah. Right. Uh, and runs bad. No, each of them just at 4,000. He hasn't beat Pete Rose yet, has he? He's beat him career. Yeah. Uh, well, I know it's including Japan. Right? He batted in 1,314 runs, and he played for the Cincinnati Reds, Philadelphia Phillies, Montreal Expos, and he managed and played for the Cincinnati Reds during 84 to 89. And he's also banned from baseball for life. For what? <laughs> why? <laughs> yeah, why is he? It was for some gambling scandal. and he did, Scandal. He, actually, he's not banned from the World Hall of Fame because he's still in the Wrestling Hall of Fame, I think. <laughs> Huh? <laughs> that just took a twist. <laughs> He's in the Wrestling Hall of Fame. I know he fought Kane at WrestleMania 14. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So they considered him uh, Kane's my official. Boy. So they let him put it. They put him in to honor the fact that he did the Baseball Hall of Fame. Yeah, he, and the, that's not tr- that should be allowed. His career highlights and awards were 17 All Stars, three WS or well, World C- Series, 10 N- NL MP- MVPs or one M. NL MVP, uh, World Series MB- MVP, NL Rookie of the Year, two Golden Glove Awards, two uh, Silver Slugger Award, Robert Sur- Clemente Award, three NL Batting Champions. He was Cincinnati re- for rewarded. Uh, Cincinnati Clemente Reds, Clemente they were retired his number 14, and he's he's in the Cincinnati Reds. Hall of Fame. That's what I got here. I don't think that's correct. <laughs> uh, anyways, the reason he was banned is... Really not worth it. He deserves to be in the Hall of Fame for all the good that he does, and the good he did should outweigh the bad he did while betting. Didn't he bet on baseball? Correct. <laughs> not <laughs> on his own team while that managing. he managed it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Bet against it, right? Yeah. Just, I yeah. think he did everything. Yeah. Mini Minoso eats pieces of shit like Pete Rose for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> he eats pieces of shit. So let me talk not, not literally. Let me tug your heartstrings a bit, Dave. Ted Williams played for the Red Sox from 39 to 42. But then, what did he do from 43 to 45? He was uh, taken abroad. In, uh, took abroad? <laughs> he took abroad. And then he came back. To <laughs> Where did he take her? <laughs> to Europe. To the picture show, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> And then he came back in 46 to 60, and he was still a 19-time All-Star over Pete Rose's 16, and whatever else. I I, I honestly don't know who to pick uh, right now. They all have impressive stats. Well, I'm not done yet. Okay, let's hear it. Well, you can't be seriously taking Mini Minoso. I don't know anything about him. He could be the best player ever. Rob just picked him because it uh, kind of remind, reminds you of Rob Di Podesta. Minoso, De, De Pesto, De, De Pedestro. Isn't there like what? There was a GM of the Dodgers. It was a De Pedesta. Correct. Yeah, so, so, so he could have. Well, he was. That has nothing to do with this. He wasn't a player, right? No. Incorrect. He wasn't a player. Either. No, he was no. not. Okay. Uh, Mini Minoso has saved over two thousand kittens. Two <laughs> <laughs> on his own. He chops on down. His own. He on chops his own. down trees with his bare hands. Whoa, whoa. I want to see this. Fact check this. <laughs> this is Wikipedia. Can we fact check? <laughs> All right, Wikipedia. Rob, yeah, Rob totally just actually. added it to Wikipedia in the last five <laughs> He went into his Wikipedia account. He raised over 500 orphans on his own. And he's been named Humanitarian of the Year by NATO 12 times. That doesn't seem credible. Bullshit. Uh, so let me give you me. some of Ted Show Williams' me this. nickname. Show me where on Wikipedia Ted, you found this. Ted Williams' nickname, Teddy Ball Game. Uh, and also known as the greatest hitter who ever lived. Or better than Pete Rose? Who named that? The greatest hitter who ever lived. Mm. He didn't have more hits, but the greatest... But he lived before Pete Rose, right? So well, He lived in conjunction with Pete Rose. Well, for a time, too. <laughs> um, yeah. What was Pete Rose's nickname? Uh, <laughs> was it the greatest hitter who ever lived? or Charlie they, Hustle. Charlie Hustle. <laughs> oh, yeah, Charlie Hustle. Charlie Ironically... Hustle. Minnie Minoso's nickname was the greatest baseball player of all time. <laughs> and they're over. And I'm out. Is that true? Correct. In- incorrect. incorrect. Did you understand what I was trying to say earlier? Is that, he bullshitting me? Because it he's, is true. That he's, he's, bull- he's bullshitting you. The respite that Ted Williams had was because he went to serve in World War II. Okay. And I'm out. 
I say he that, abandoned I say his that team for nicknames? to go to war. Right. Did he have a choice though? I say for nicknames, it's like, oh, he's the greatest hitter of all time. I know he's the greatest hitter. It's like, oh, you Charlie Hustle? Oh yeah, I know who he is. Howard Stern's nickname is the king of all media. Doesn't make it so, but you know, if you say it enough, people start to believe it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Ah. Uh. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, oh, geez. Um, I think I have to disqualify Rob. Uh, <laughs> the kittens. Think about the kittens. <laughs> yeah, I am thinking about them, but, you know, I, I, I don't know. How if many? Can... How many? Over 2,000. That's Over a... 2,000. That's a lot. Um, well, like, like 2,001 or like 2,500? Uh, like, uns- those, those extra 499 <laughs> kittens. Would go a long way in here. Uh, that, uh, maybe I did not. That was all at one time. Oh, oh that's a lot. <laughs> that was that was that was that was that was one litter. Oh, all right, that's a lot of cats. They yeah. had been put in a garbage bag in the river. Good thing Minnie Minoso was there. <laughs> he, he saved them okay. all at once. <laughs> that's Minnie Minoso, baby. <laughs> and I think this is actually the greatest baseball player crest. of all time. Okay, I'm gonna. Uh, Pete Rose versus Ted Williams. Uh, I feel so slighted. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Rob. Uh, I don't know who to um, you know. give this to. You okay, know. can you can you uh, anything to say about against Pete Rose? Against Pete Rose? Yeah. He was banned from baseball. <laughs> he can't That's not be the best. But not for he his can't. plane. It's about his playing ability. And that was as a manager. Yeah. No, he was a player manager at the time, and as a manager, he had actual impact on the game. If he bet on the other team and he had his best pitcher in there throwing wicked stuff, he takes his best right. pitcher in the sixth inning so he All can right. put a jump in to give the other team a chance to win the game. Right. So he actually discredited the actual Hold on a of second. winning a baseball Hold on a second. Tell me, when you hear his baseball player's name, do you recognize it immediately? No, because it's from like 100 years ago. How am I going to recognize it? All right. Who are you talking about? Ted Williams or Ted- Pete Rose? Ted Williams, and I was going to go on to say, you recognize Pete, uh, uh, Ted, Ro- Ted Rose. Ted Rose. Or, or, there you go. <laughs> Ted Williams is a much better baseball player than Ted Rose. I only have, so, one, I only have one question. Yes. I bet on baseball. Does that mean I should be disqualified from the Hall of Fame as well? Well, do you play baseball? You're, no. You have never qualified for the Hall of Fame. But you're not a baseball player. So you player. can't be disqualified. That That's up for grabs still. No, well, you, you join a major league you're team. You're just going to save your kittens. Who do you think, honestly, though, who do you feel is the better player? Oh, God, Pete Rose. Yeah? Yeah. I think you just want to aim to win. I don't want to. I'm 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 talking about Rob. I'm talking about Rob. But you feel that legitimately Pete Rose is the better player? Not at all. (laughs) (laughs) All right, very well. Damn. Damn. He wants to be impartial, but then he says, damn. All right, point goes to Barry. Sorry, Eamon. You tried. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. You picked kind of. I, a... I couldn't find anything to argue with after that first part. Well, you did cheat. Yeah. But a good player. Yeah. Are you betting on this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> should, should you? You will give it. You will give it to me in the history round. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Let's move on to history. All right. Ding, ding, ding. Ding, 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 ding. The history question is, what was the most significant event of 1976? 1976 being the year of birth of Rob and Barry and McKenna, who should have been here, but isn't. So, um, Bullshit. Let's, you know, it was a poignant year. Now, Chris Seymour said that this was the most significant event of the year was him being born. But well, Chris Seymour is also bullshit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Where is Chris Seymour right now? Guys, uh, guys, guys. Guys, guys. Voltron. Uh, you got you it. If Chris Seymour was that... Impactful. He should have been here in case McKenna didn't show up. I didn't invite him. I thought I had McKenna, mm-hmm. but you know. So 1976. Let's start. Oh wait. Uh, do you even have an answer for this? Yeah, I you do. do. Okay, we'll start with Eamon. Uh, all right. So I picked um, that 1976 was the year that the fair loot use laws were enacted. The what? The fair use laws, which essentially states that if you creatively <laughs> transform a piece of media, that it can be that it's not considered copyright. Which means that shows like uh, Family Guy and South Park, they can use, they can creatively transform, st- they can take things, and as long as it's creatively transforming it, they can, it's not considered cap- copyright. And this has changed things so much because it has led to a lot of media of parody and all that stuff, spoofs and all that, and things like that. 
because it's creatively transforming it, it's led it to this new world of media, and I think, and that's why it's the most significant event of 1976. Is that why rappers can sample songs and ruin them? It, I don't know. Is that why movies? <laughs> is that why movies like Scary Movie exist? Uh, scary movie. We don't talk yeah, about. Yeah, like you know, Robot Chicken and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, Robot Chicken. Uh, yeah. So yeah. you, what you're saying is actually that this was a terrible thing to have happened. It was not. Well, for some things it was terrible, but I feel like the good outweighs the bad, and it's made for a lot of. You can basically, you can speak your mind. It may, it allows you to speak freely about other people, and so. People can give their opinions without being like copyrighted if they're talking about like something horrible or something like that. You're so, an asshole, Rob. I don't like freedom of speech. <laughs> 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 All right, let's go to Rob. What do you got? 1976. Uh, my initial answer got stolen, which means Barry is going to answer what I was going <laughs> to say. Um, so I went with the Montreal Olympics, which gives me the opportunity to go on a bit of a political rant, um, which I love to do. Um, the Montreal Olympics were... Um, bullshit because they plunged us into debt. Thank you, Pierre Elliott Trudeau. This is why you're anti-liberal? Uh, it's one of a million reasons <laughs> why I'm anti-liberal. Um, somehow his silver spoon fed kid gets to be prime minister. I don't know how oh. after his legacy almost ruins the country and the Montreal Olympics is just a symbol of it. Mm, interesting. We're interesting. still paying. Wait, what was wrong We're still about paying the Olympics? Out. We're still paying for that fucking stadium. That stadium's shit. That's crumbling and is empty. Yeah. Still paying for yeah, it. Yeah, but they're going to bring baseball back to Montreal. <laughs> With the new stadium. <laughs> okay, well, hey, that's a that that's a, a good answer, or a concise that's one. That's a very significant uh, fact about 1976, I think. It's it is significant to Canada at least. It's a yeah, sure. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I just like to point out that Rob basically conceded before he answered. His well, question. he said, you, "Oh yeah, I'm out." He <laughs> said you scooped him, but you know you can still fight. No, fuck the liberals. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> All right then. So uh, the most significant um, event of 1976 is the formation of of Apple. Oh. And yeah. how much that has transcended the world and become a part of everyday life for so many people other than Rob with his... I'm an Android uh, user. Yeah, <laughs> with his Android. And I would argue, though, that even the Android platform is is uh, somewhat based on the technology and the evolution of thought behind what um, Steve Jobs and, and Apple created as a... Steve Jobs a, didn't create anything. As a platform. It was all Wozniak and his group. It was not Steve Jobs. Well, that's fine. Controversy. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're, what I'm talking about here is Apple creating uh, the the creation of Apple, which Wozniak was a part of um, for a time, anyways, and uh, and and just how much that has impacted the world, um, just on a number of different levels, impacting people's lives, um, dollar amounts, sales figures, podcasts, prevalence, podcasts, prevalence of product the amount i like i i have uh five ipads in my family of four which is ridiculous and three iphones um counterpoint <laughs> you can take your counterpoint but i'll still remain to, to to tell you that the basis of that platform is still from the creative genius that was brought out of born out of apple and counterpoint go ahead if Apple had never been formed, we wouldn't have to be dealing with this fucking Pokemon Go bullshit <laughs> right now. True. That's, that's true. That's not an Apple point creation. over. But, uh, no. but the it's platform not, wouldn't exist. Yeah, the platform <laughs> wouldn't exist. True. I was driving here tonight and driving past the park. Yeah. The whole west end of the park. I fucking see everybody like this, like doing this. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, there must be a Pokemon piece of shit in this area. <laughs> I figure from an insurance liability. Well, supposed to work in Canada. Yeah, with, like from an know. insurance liability point of view, if I run one of them over, they're at fault, right? Like, yeah, probably. Like, what, what's the actual liability well, there? It will happen. If they've got their head buried in a screen because yeah. yeah. they're chasing a whatever the hell they are, under. I don't even know. Magical creatures. Like, right. Yeah. Do you do this, Dave? No, Pokemon's after my time, but. Uh, it doesn't matter. It does. Everybody's doing it of I all know, age. I know, but I'm not. Like, Eamon, you do you do this? No. 
Oh, All right. I love this table. Oh. Yeah, but like the thing is, like I never got into that Pokemon brand, so I don't know. I know a lot of other people have. And it's not about the Pokemon. It's no, about it's doing not. the cool shit that everyone else is doing. Yeah. It's a peer pressure thing. It's so a fad. It's yeah. totally a fad. But there will be something else yeah, sure. that will use this technology, another game that will come along that's the same kind of idea. Sure. Yeah. Sure. And I hope they all walk into traffic. <laughs> well, it's the evolution. Okay, but we're getting off topic. Apple. We got the Montreal Olympics, and we got the uh, whatever Eamon described. Fair, fair use law? Fair use law, which was an American law? Uh, yeah, but okay. I mean, you know, it's kind of spread. Important for yeah. entertainment purposes. Wow. Okay, so a lot was going on in 1976. Um, and these two guys got popped out. Yeah, popped out. Popped out. Yeah, you guys, you two came I along. Came and right McKenna. Well, Who? Yeah. Yeah. Who? <laughs> <laughs> Who? I, I, I'm sorry, I don't... I don't Listen to people who flake away. Oh, oh. boom. Eamon drops a hammer. He was working. How do you listen to things that don't exist, Eamon? It was a rhetorical question. Oh. oh okay. And Chris Seymour came along in 1976. Wow. Fuck oh. you, Chris Seymour. <laughs> 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 That's got to be the part of the video. <laughs> I love you, Chris Seymour. <laughs> but if you're not listening, fuck you. <laughs> Every episode of Jim's Barbecue, they say, fuck you, Chris Seymour. Good night. <laughs> so... Cross promotion. The cross promotion. Uh, okay, I, I need. I need a little fight here. I need to know why yours is better than the next two. I already conceded. Okay, All so right. fair, so what is wh- so great about what fair loose fair use law versus yeah. Apple computer? <laughs> the uh, formation of Apple computer. All right, then tell me what's so what's so good about iPods that we would miss so much. About iPods that we would miss? Yeah. Well, do you want to listen to music on your uh, Shockwave tape player or your <laughs> um, your Sony Discman? Or yeah. do you even know what they are, Amy? Yeah, I had all I of know those what things. Are. Yeah, yeah. So, on, but but on a most kids your age probably would not know what those are. Yeah, that's and true. I would rather carry this around if I'm going to be a music guy. Than something six or seven times the size of it. Well, uh, we never with said media that, that that has to be used with it. We we never said that music devices would have never gotten invented. We just said that out. Uh, just saying what Apple. Okay, so to you're gonna say there's another fictitious company that was created in 1976 well, that would actually pick company. up the slack and still have created this. So then I say that company would have been the most significant of 1976. So All you're right. really arguing with me instead of against me, Eamon. Well, I'll, I think that fair use law is matters more because it it leads to people understand. It leads to. Um, Can you tell me exactly what fair use law is? Well, you did at the beginning. Yeah. Well, fair use law. Uh, I was here for that. Yeah, I was here for it, but yeah. I basically, is just uh, the ability to steal shit. Steal to, to not to not steal intellectual property. No, what it allows them to do is like you can basically make right, fu- make fun of people, reference other material. Without a fair, okay, a fair use is any copy copying of copyrighted material done for limited or transformative pers- purposes, such as to comment upon, criticize, or parody a copyrighted work. S- such uses can be done without permission from the copyright owner. So you're going to tell me that the ability for someone to reuse material, spin it a different way, and use it again for themselves is more important and more uh, eventful or more significant than the creation of a company that uh, has a piece of product in probably every home in North America and or uh, the civilized world. Yeah, because even if iPods didn't exist, even if mobile devices didn't exist, fair use effects... Movies, it affects TV, it affects, uh, you know, uh, I guess. You, you, you keep getting you wouldn't You wouldn't be able to use that law nearly as much if you didn't have YouTube and uh, other sites that allow you to reproduce. And PCs reuse. still exist. PCs. But, but you, okay, you keep coming back to Apple as the iPod company. And before they were that, they were the personal home computer. They That's what they created. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so that's... They what, still have laptops. They still have um, every generation of computer along the way. And until what I would suggest that iPhones sparked the prevalence of them in mainstream, but they are still um, a, a, a computer-based product company versus an iPhone or iPod company, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I don't know. Like, you could say you wouldn't have the internet if you 
Or you couldn't you couldn't use that law to promote or, or build content if there was no internet. But you use these devices to play that, and I, I just think that this this transcends the world, and almost any person in the world has the ability to do different and new and crazy things with Apple products than you know anything else, basically. Mm. I think you're done. Uh, yeah. Point goes to Barry. All right. <laughs> I just saw I just saw all the hope draining from his eyes as you were <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you you're like, yeah, I guess he's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, good job. Okay, so just for a tally, we got Barry with three points, Rob and Eamon with one point each. So if Rob or Eamon win this next round, they will be in the speed round. Uh, the loser will not be. Uh, if Barry takes the point, we're gonna have to do some kind of a tie break between yep. uh, Eamon and Rob. So Moving on to the wild card round, and our question is a fun one. Um, the question is, what is the best toy for a young boy? Starting with Eamon. All right, I picked Lego, and the reason I picked Lego is because I haven't picked it. Because it can become is because it's the toy that can be any. It lets you expand your imagination to any amount of area, and for a young boy who's growing up and he's gaining a lot of imagination as his brain goes bigger. He is able to use Legos to form and create, like, to form and create amazing scu- sculptures. And you know, Lego is kind of like a, a cu- is kind of like culturally known everywhere and used um, because you know you can see like big Lego figures. You know, I can't think of any other toy other than Lego that got a movie. Well, there's My Little Pony. Battleship. Oh. <laughs> Battleship. <laughs> that was a horrible movie. Well, that's a toy. You got a movie? Oh, that's true. My Little Pony. Uh, toy Story. No, to- toy, toy Story's story not an actual toy. Toy Story though. is a movie before it was a toy. Yeah. Well, toy Story's got lots of toys in it. Anyways, um, it does have Slink. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you can build like tons of s- sculptures and stuff, and because you know Lego, it's basically the building brick to our imagination. And you know, it's it goes back to the Danish carpenters where this started. Danish I, carpenters. I know a lot about Lego, right? Yes, yeah, so it started as a Danish carpentry place. Danish carpentry place. Interesting. So why is it the best toy for a young boy? Because a young boy needs something to oh needs something that will keep him entertained for very long, and something that can become a lot that can become basically anything. Will okay. Keep him entertained for the longest. Interesting, Rob. The best toy. I wait, I, I, I'm going to pick my answer because we haven't picked yet. Dinky cars is my answer. Dinky cars. Okay. We'll come so back. Go ahead. No, that's fine. <laughs> you said dinky. <laughs> <laughs> I did say dinky. You want me to say it a couple more times? You'll get to it. Yeah. The best toy for a young boy is a bicycle. Okay. And why? <clears throat> I'm going to go on personal experience on this one. The best part of growing up for me was being able to come home every night from school and just hop on my bike and go and have the freedom to explore my world the way I wanted to. Do you I like grow up in the country? Grew up in the country. Yeah. But had had I not had I, I had I been in a my bike. <laughs> I want to ride my bicycle. I want to ride my bike. <laughs> See, you're allowed to sing that because right. of the free press laws. Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. We can repurpose things. <laughs> was that? That was that was I was it! <laughs> I, I'm profiting from that song already. Um, with Legos, you're confined to your house. You're, you're stuck inside exactly. or, or wherever you might be. And you're building and using your imagination. But you have the freedom to roam on a bike and create new worlds and explore new worlds and go wherever your heart desires. You just described Lego. Physically. (laughs) Physically, not mentally. Whether that be alone or whether that be with friends. Oh, but the pen is mightier than the sword. Neither of these are (laughs) pens or swords. I don't think that applies. All right, but uh, yeah, let him finish, Eamon. He's talking about a bike, a bicycle for a young boy. I don't know if it's a toy. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was thinking is that a bicycle isn't a, really a toy. It's more of a utility. Can you buy it at Toys R Us? You can. Then it's a toy. Okay. Maybe equipment? You know yeah. What? You can buy candy at Toys R Us. doesn't make them toys. It's yeah. a fucking toy then. Yeah. <laughs> no, it isn't. You can, you can play with candy. 
You can. Yeah, sure. Depends where you put it. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, what, was it dinky cars? Is that what we're... Uh, what's, what? Speaking of putting things places. <laughs> 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 dinky cars, not guinea pigs, right? <laughs> <laughs> Gerbils. Gerbils. <laughs> Same shit, different <laughs> teeth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dinky cars. Amazing. They, like Hot Wheels? Is that what we're talking about? Hot Wheels. Hot Wheels... Uh, any kind of small um, car, truck. That was like my least favorite toy when I was a kid. Oh, wow. I really? just, there were like Lego Hot Wheels, I think. You didn't set up the tracks with the loops and jumps and stuff? Loops yeah, and jumps, you do the, I did the loops and so, jumps. So this is what I'm saying. It, it actually brings a, an element of the creativity of Lego with kind of Rob's go anywhere kind of an attitude because you can build and develop and creatively think about being a race car, being a policeman, being... Uh, a, a truck, a dump truck, a digger, whatever the case, you can build tracks around that. And then also it can be portable, brought anywhere in the uh, universe. And uh, <laughs> this sounds like a worse version of I go. You can take it to Saturn. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, Are you sure you're not describing Lego you with the Hot Wheels on them? If you have the means, you can bring dinky cars to Saturn. If you sure. had the means, you could ride your bike anywhere in the universe, too. Yeah, had... No, no, I agree. I agree, and that's what I'm saying. I play Legos anywhere, so you're it all kinda, equal on it that. Kinda, yeah, exactly. It kind of brings together those both of your answers into one, um, but as a different type of toy. Okay, it's interesting. Dinky cars, bicycles, and Lego. This is not easy. Uh, you have me rebuttal. I think that because Lego is, it's just, you can make anything, and the uh, the best toy is a toy that is every toy, and that is what Lego is, exactly, in a nutshell, compressed down into a uh, amazing, like... Have you ever made a Lego bicycle? Mm, no, but Lego bicycles exist. They're like little miniature ones. Everybody wants to be a bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> Even Lego. <laughs> Uh, See, Lego can be bicycle. Legos like, can be dinky cars. Yeah. It can become those things, and that's why. Because it's. I don't know, guys. You got. You have time. to come back from that one. That's, I mean. a, that's an ouch on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Bicycles are the only thing that allow you to run away from bullies, run away from your family. Mm. It's Im- called running. Impress girls. What? You, you can impress girls <laughs> with bicycles. <laughs> <laughs> it's physical activity so you can uh, exercise and burn calories and feel good about yourself um, that's, that's but, what but I biggest, utility again biggest of all like I said before is just the freedom it gives we all remember what it's like to be 10, 11, 12 and feel like well poor, I'm being 10, 11, 12 yeah. right. I was so, in a bicycle gang we know what it's like to feel like we're under the thumb of our parents and the one thing we all had that let us get away was the bike did you, would, do you guys have a bicycle gang in Waterloo? I did. I did in Carla. Was he in it? No, he he was on a concession. He, yeah, I was. <laughs> I was a gang of he one. He couldn't. He couldn't get to us easily enough. Right. We were in a subdivision. Yeah. So me, Jamie Sharp, and Ryan Mabry had a bicycle gang. So if you guys wanted to hang out when you were kids, like someone had to drive you to like. No, hop on your bike, dummy. How far did? Yeah, us? but no, but Rob couldn't drive. You couldn't I drive. Did him. I used to ride into Carlisle all the time? Oh, did you? Oh, yeah. oh he never came to my house. <laughs> oh, where, where was he? Going, I, to, going to my job. Okay. Yeah, that's going why it's a utility. Job? It used to go places. It's used to do things. things. It's yeah. not. To, uh, it's a utility, not a toy. Yeah, but it got me there to my part-time job so that I could make money when I was 11 or 12. It got me. I so does a car, uh, which I is a utility. Oh, yeah? Hey, man, stop interrupting. Sorry. <laughs> you can't drive a car when you're 12. You don't have. You don't have the actual freedom. You, you have to ask can. somebody to get you there. You mm-hmm. can't do it on your own. You don't have the personal freedom. Why do you need personal freedom when you can use your mind? Jeez, he's a commie, eh? He's he's been doing this game for a while, guys. He's, he's you know he's getting better at it. He used to what? be a lot. The weird. question yeah, was just was the question was just why would you want personal freedom? I'm not even going to respond <laughs> to that question. I would probably like to ride my bike and play Lego somewhere. Oh, hey, somewhere right. crazy. Maybe and I'd so. like to ride my bike and play Hot Wheels. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> both of those have I, bike riding involved, yeah, though. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Mine can be both at once. Hey, I'll tell you. This is the, the last point I'm going to make. You're not going to get. Uh, you're not going to pick up your Lego set and go and impress a girl and get her to kiss you. You're not going to pick up your Hot Wheels and go show a girl and get her to kiss you. But you're going to get her to ride on the handlebars of your bike, take her down behind a tree by the river, 
and she's going to kiss you. Well, supposedly, if you're a little boy. Uh, never mind. What were we going to no, say? No, no, never mind. If you're a little boy, you don't want to kiss girls? I guess. <laughs> well, sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I stand by my point. <laughs> I don't know. I think you might have just given it to Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Rob wins the point. Ah! <laughs> Bonus round. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Nice ding. try, Eamon, though. You, you fought well. Uh, you yeah. fought well. Thank yeah. you. Very, you should be very proud of yourself. Thanks. So I already got the head. <laughs> It's off and everything. I'm out. He's done. He's never, <laughs> made, he's never made the speed round before. Yeah, no, I've never made it. You know, so uh, you did very well. You only won one round, but you were close on a lot of them. Yeah. So good job. So you're going well to help me with the uh, speed round? Yeah, sure. All right. Okay, guys. We're moving on to the speed round. 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 Sunday. 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 It's speed round. <laughs> Are you ready for the speed round? Well, I'm ready. And the score for those of you keeping track at home uh, is three for Barry, two for Rob. Going into what oh, does that carry over to the that speed carries round? over? So you're one up. Oh, I see. So, I thought we were net zero now. So we're gonna go through six questions, all in the same categories we just did, but different questions. You'll get an A or a B. Whoever says it first will uh, obviously get to champion that thing. The other one has to argue the other one thing or concede. And uh, and we oh, go. You give us the options. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. You have. Mama. So he's gonna say like red or white. If you say red, pink. <laughs> <laughs> That's a mixture. Right. I like them exactly. both. Exactly. So whether you like these things or not, it doesn't really matter. Okay. So. Okay. Moving on. Speed round. Ding ding ding. Movies. Which Adam Sandler movie is better? Uh, ha- or Billy Madison or Happy Gilmore? Happy Gilmore. Billy Madison. Oh. Wow. All right. So you yeah. said Happy Gilmore, right? Yeah. Uh, sports movie. Um, All right. Okay. So Happy Gilmore. <laughs> Happy Gilmore. Um, sp- again, sports movie. Uh, combining the mentality of a hockey player with a professional golf player. The true underdog story. Uh, somebody farting around because his grandmother got kicked out of her house and he was there when they were moving stuff out and he picked up a golf club and he happened to hit a, a golf ball a hell of a long way so you know where where could that take me and it took him to the professional tour and he won the money and he bought back the house for his grandmother and along the way just pure hilarity and crazy bullshit and yeah go ahead rob billy madison billy madison is just a study in ridiculousness which is why i love it because nothing that happens in that entire movie would ever happen in real life, which is why it's phenomenal. So it's the story of a rich kid bum who floats his way through high school. Uh, we find out later that his dad has basically paid off every teacher and he's turned himself into a nothing who has keg parties every night with his friends, gets drunk and passes out in the pool and Nudie magazine day <laughs> and he's forced to go back to school and start it from scratch from kindergarten on mm-hmm. would never happen ends up picking up one of the teachers would never happen like everything in the she movie was hot, that one that oh, yeah. veronica Vaughn veronica yeah is one yeah. fine piece of ass <laughs> just everything i about know it. from experience <laughs> no you don't i'm I, a friend of mine. <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> I think I'm arguing uh, for you. Okay, just well, everything about it, and there's so many more jokes. Yeah, and, and and I'm like I love Happy Gilmore. It's great, but there's so many more memorable quotes and lines and jokes that people people at this table who are arguing the other side quote way more <laughs> than they do Happy Gilmore quotes. Give it to Rob. Yeah, well, you got it. You got it. Moving on to television. Back to school. Back to school <laughs> to prove to dad that I'm not a fool. I've got my lunch, my shoes tied tight. I didn't know you guys liked this I so much. I hope I don't get in a fight. Oh, back to school. Oh, Doyle rules. Back to oh, school. Doyle rules. <laughs> All right, yeah, I, I think I made the right pick there. All right, who was the boss, Angela or Tony? Tony. Hear it. Shit. <laughs> Angela. I changed to Angela. Rob, has, <laughs> Rob hasn't said anything yet. I changed to Angela. All right, you're Angela. <laughs> All right. Well, um, he was by definition the employer. He cleaned the house. He. He was the employee. Did, you mean? 
Yeah, that's what I meant. Sorry, yeah. employee. Um, he did what Angela told him based on the fact that he was the employee and he was charged with cleaning the house. And I, there, there's a double dichotomy there when you talk about in in every uh, every a lot of relationships in the long term. Um, the woman becomes the boss anyways because the man rolls over and and uh, just does what the girl says. So uh, in two different ways, Angela is the boss. I thought I had Angela. No, because no, no. I switched because you never it. picked. How does he get to switch? Because you, you never here picked. For that part? I, <laughs> he yelled the I, name. I know, but then he's like, no, no, but he had, Rob hasn't said anything, so therefore I switched. So I it. switched. Yeah, I switched. So now you're Tony. <laughs> so. I don't want Tony. I thought he had Tony. Hey, that's, hey, that's why I didn't say anything, because he yelled a name out. Wait, uh, you still got to say it. Well, uh, fuck you both. We both know the answer is Mona. We both know Mona was in charge. Mona ran that house. Mona ran the family. Mona ran Angela. Mona ran Tony. She did it by flirting. Mm-hmm. But we also know she had a strong hand. Yep. She was in charge. If it was an open-ended question, I could give it to you, but I have to give it to Barry because he actually picked it. Because he's a cheater. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was quicker. This All guy. Right. No, the other guy. No, this guy. <laughs> Rob didn't say anything. Well, did you learn a lesson there, Bunk? I thought I was being a conscientious objector there and letting you take your first pick. You should have objected what he was doing what he was doing. I rolled my eyes. <laughs> All right. Music round. Uh, music, music, no, <laughs> not music. No, I'll take music. So he gets not music. <laughs> All right. Question is, which decade's better, 80s or 90s? 90s. You get 80s. Wow. 90s goes first because you said it first. A- 80s music sucks because it just does. <laughs> it's, it's the it's the soundtrack of every John Hughes movie. It's mm-hmm. it's it's I like John the. Hughes poppy dumb synthesizer it's the soundtrack of the decade of excess it's the soundtrack of the reagan administration it's the soundtrack of just everything that was wrong with the world at that time where no one had any care in the world and it was just fun and frivolous you said the 90s was no, I'm arguing against the 80s right now. Yeah, I know. That's what the 80s But you, 80s haven't, you was. haven't said anything about the one you're going for. No, but the 90s is what I grew up with, what we grew up with. So it was it was the antithesis of everything that happened in the 80s. So the 80s was fun and poppy, and the 90s was serious and heavy, and it dealt with issues, and uh, it actually had some gravitas to it. It actually had some – there was actually some – something there as opposed to just being a glass of kool-aid but the whole point of music is to have fun and release and let go and if you bring the seriousness to it the political aspect to it it becomes more um confrontational more not as fun and and not carefree you gotta go back to the 80s and just have fun with it and be with the music and you know, let it let it kind of let you run away with, you know, alcohol and drugs and, and, and just enjoy the music for what it is, not for what the bullshit message or the, the specifically targeted message is. Plus, the 90s had Spice Girls, Backstreet Boys, New Kids on the Block, like terrible fucking music. Just terrible. terrible. Terrible music in every decade, but the good music in the 90s was way better than the good music in the 80s. And I don't know how you can argue for frivolity music has always it's always and one of the things that's always been a strong point of music is it allows people to make a political statement and allows them to make change and enact change and change the world it's not about just being poppy and cute amen what's your opinion um i think i'm gonna have to give it to rob why because the he made a good I don't know. I think that you made a better point about like why the '80s isn't as good. Okay. I was also leaning towards Rob, so I will give it to Rob. Yeah, Rob. Rob should win that. There's no really good reason <laughs> why the '80s is any better. We're sitting on a tie ball game still. Uh, yeah, we're now back to four, tie. Four. We're now tied again. We are, are we on an yeah. odd number of questions here? Just. Uh. No, the street left to go. Oh, okay, okay. So, so, yeah, so there's there. no extra innings. Okay. No. Yeah, no. If you, yeah, no, it's not possible now. That's yeah. my ask. Okay. Yeah. 
No extra innings. Okay. Sports question. Which Blue Jays championship year was better, 92 or 93? 92. He's got 92. You got 93. Fuck, I'll argue it either way. Yeah. 92 was better. It was the it was the first one, first one in the history of the Blue Jays. It was, um, it was uh, it came it came from not came from nowhere. We had an amazing team, but the first iteration of a championship and winning the championship comes with uh, the insanity behind. Oh my God, we did it. We won a championship, and uh, I, I I don't know. There's a lot of things that are very similar in terms of the comparison of the players and stuff like that, but. I think the first iteration of winning the championship is always going to have a better taste in my mind because uh, it's the first time it happened. Rob, 93. Uh, 93 was a repeat, and there are very few, uh, if you go back into Major League history, there are very few, you can count them on one hand, teams that have repeated. um, Back to back. Back to back. So it was kind of, if it hadn't been for... Uh, the strike year, it might have been a continuation, and, and the attendance problems, and et cetera, et cetera. It might have been year two of a dynasty, but really, it's very, very hard in Major League Baseball to repeat. Uh, also, it wasn't just uh, the same team picked up and dropped down the second year. There was a lot of changes. Um, the record was better in 93 than it was in 92. Um, uh, and to be honest, I think that the... Uh, uh, the Phillies team that they beat in 93 was a heck of a lot better team than the Braves team that they beat in 92. So I think from a quality point of view, um, the team was better. It's a heck of a lot harder to repeat. Um, uh, almost every team that wins has done it for the first time. Repeating is a lot harder. Extremely hard. So the, the first time was a lot more organic. Uh, you say there was a lot of turnover. There was. And that's, you know, by nature of contracts inspiring people... Uh, winning a championship and wanting to try and gain more value for themselves going elsewhere. So you you interchange those players. But one of my point is that the first time is a lot more of an organic growth where we had a lot more homegrown talent. We had uh, Blue Jays that were Blue Jays for a number of years that were born Blue Jays and carried through and won a championship. Whereas I think in 93 there was a lot of exit and interest of uh, big names that kind of to a lesser extent also happened in 92 with the trade deadline. But I think it was a lot more, um, uh, a lot more evidence of that in '93. I I gotta give it to Rob. I think Rob made the better argument. Uh, I think the whole better record and the fact that it's so hard to repeat uh, was what kind of swayed me. So, thanks, uh, Dave. Yeah. Okay, history. Okay, let's move on to the history round. Question is, who would you vote for in the upcoming election? Trump or Hillary? Hillary. Oh, Jesus. You're Trump. <laughs> no, we could argue. That's a, that's a, another one-sided question. Uh, I don't think it is. Uh, no, so there's lots of nut bars out there. There's lots of people who hate Hillary, so you know you just have to. The polls are actually really close. I don't right want to be too. on fucking tape supporting <laughs> fucking Donald fucking Trump. Okay, then tape. I mean, I don't want to be recorded. <laughs> but Rob said Hillary. <laughs> yeah, fine, go. Okay. But you know if Rob wins this, first. if Rob wins this, he wins the game. Well, I guess Rob wins the game. Uh, no, she's the Democrat and not insane. He's insane. I thought you were all conservative though. I thought you'd be all pro-Trump. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's a totally different kettle of fish down there. Like, he's yeah. literally insane. Yeah. Like the 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 <laughs> shit that he's talking about is like literally like insane. <laughs> I don't even know like. It's so worse than worse than Justin Trudeau. Oh God, Justin Trudeau is just a silver spoon piece of shit who got handed a job. Yeah. Like he's not actually maliciously a bad person. Mm-hmm. Donald Trump is a reprehensible human being who has zero track record of being able to do this job. Zero track record of being a good human being. It's just. It, <sighs> I, I'm done. So right. the only All thing right. I'll say is that, yes, Donald Trump is abrasive and ridiculous. And a lot of the things that he says are racist and really. Yeah, he's a, he's not, a, not, he's a bad guy, but is he a lesser evil than so, Hillary? So, so here's the thing. So so the I think what people are gravitating to are uh, the biases within their own brains in terms of 
how do we stop the the negativity how do we stop some of the things that are happening that people are either a afraid of or b don't like and unfortunately a lot of people place the blame on uh certain ethnic groups and certain religions and um and, and you know he's just kind of he's picking on that in people's mentality and i think that's why he's gaining favor the problem is when he gets into if he was to get into office he can't do any of it because the government has to ratify what he wants to do and he has to push it through congress and i think that what you're gonna get is it if he was ever to get there is some sort of kind of middle ground that you know plays on the sensibility of you know the idea while fascist and crazy and over the top is a basis for an idea to say what can we actually do and I think that people gravitate to the bombasticness, the the craziness of the idea, and say, "Hey, that's great," and they go for it. And and I think that when you actually sit back and be smart about it and say, "Okay, why would I vote for him?" Because the idea ideas aren't actually convertible, but are some of those ideas gonna get us to a safer place when they are vetted and tweaked and and ratified by congress will they actually become viable and good laws that actually make sense to make a safer country because he can't do any of it he's being over dramatic and he's being crazy um to the point of just stirring up shit and getting support but uh it, you know there's there's a part of you that could say okay get behind that get get, get away from that stuff what can actually be done when he is president and some of the things might be okay ideas that get tweaked and made better and actually become valuable kind of uh, presidential uh, outcomes. So there was, I read this story yesterday, so <clears throat> it came out in the press yesterday that um, the Trump team, and this came from the camp of um, uh, Kucinich, who's a, a K- lot. Are you Kasich? Kucinich. He's an Ohio senator. Oh, okay. he was one of the guys running for the Republican nomination. I think you're talking about Kasich, the governor of Ohio, right? No, no Dennis Kucinich. Okay, Dennis Kucinich. Okay. So the story came out that uh, before Trump settled on his VP nominee, that they had started approaching uh, fairly high level Republican um, party guys, f- guys, and they'd come to him and offered him the opportunity to be the VP nominee. Giving him unprecedented power, right? I think I read this, yeah. So so he said, well, kind of, what are you guys thinking? Like, what, what's the role exactly? And they said, well, you'd be in charge of foreign and domestic policy. And he his answer back was... Uh, that, Isn't that what that's the president the, does? That's the <laughs> president's job. What is, what, what is, what is the president going to be doing if I if this happens? And they're, the answer back, and he's gone on record saying this, the, the answer back was, well, Donald's going to just make America great again. So he actually has no interest yeah, in he, doing the he job. Just, he just wants the title. He has no interest in policy. He has no interest in anything other than sitting in that chair and being able to say, I win. Right. That's, Isn't that he, what a good CEO does? He, he identifies... That's the, what Charlie he Sheen says. He identifies the right people to do the job and, and has them, mm-hmm. has them uh, enact the... Uh, you know sure, what? sure. Or, you know what? In, in, a, in any other white-collar job, but you don't give... Uh, the CEO of any other company, nuclear codes. True. But I feel I feel that Barry, from the underdog position, has done enough here to get the point. And because, just because I want to see... You just want to go to the final I question. I want to see a final question. Son of a I bitch. want to see a game seven. Donald Trump. <laughs> I Donald can't Trump. believe this. Donald Trump. Why? Donald Trump. You Donald know what? Trump. He did enough, Eamon. He did enough. Make America great again. <laughs> All right. The question. The wild card question. Who will be remembered as the curling legend more so? Kevin Martin? Glenn Howard. Martin. All right. Kevin Martin. I think that uh, in the world of... (laughs) Sorry, in the country of Canada as a whole, and the stage being uh, the Olympics and the Olympics in Canada, more people in the general public will remember and identify with Kevin Martin as the greatest or one of the greatest curlers over um, Howard. Okay. Rob? Glenn Howard. Kevin's a friend of mine, 
and a Whoa, colleague. Really? And uh, I can't argue against that, so I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to concede this one. <laughs> Glenn's a great guy too. I love Glenn. He's a nice guy to be around. Um, but I, 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 can't, I, I can't. I can't argue against Kevin. In good faith. I'm sorry. Well, then Barry wins the point, and Barry wins the episode. Do you, do yeah, if you hadn't given him the Trump. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, Eamon, 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 throw out a question for fun. Um, all right. It was just, who was the better president, Alexander McKenzie or John A. McDonald? He, he, or he, prime, prime minister. minister? Neither of them were president. Yeah, sorry, prime minister. So who? Uh, Alexander McKenzie or John A. McDonald? Alexander McKenzie? Like, no one remembers him. That's not a name. He was the second prime minister. Yeah. He looked like a weird Amish guy. He was kind of fucked up. Um... John A. McDonald. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was a drunk. He's on money. I know that. That's all I know. I don't know anything about anything. He was no. the first guy, wasn't he? Was he the yeah. first guy? He was yes. the first guy. Yeah. I know. He that. was. A, he was a drunk from Scotland. And he's on money. And he got he got ousted from Parliament for a scandal with uh, CP Rail or something like that. Yeah. But. Boom. Mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, well, anyway, yeah, Barry, congratulations. Congrats, Bear. You know, uh, Rob had the opportunity to fight you there. He just couldn't say anything bad about Kevin Martin, who I would have definitely said bad things about. If, but, I, can, if I can argue for Donald Trump, he can argue for Russ Howard. Kevin Martin's got one of the worst reputations at Curling. Like, you know, I don't even know how. How? Because he's considered to be like a jerk. He's mm. considered to be a dick, but he's Rob's friend. He's a friend of mine now. I can't. I, yeah. I can't. Where did you uh, meet him? Well, we, he, we work together. Yeah, he works on the... On are, the we, are we posting this on uh, the curling websites? And, uh, <laughs> All the curling websites. Well, the curling news is picking this up. Well, it's going out into the world. So Breaking I news. Uh, uh-huh. um, some baseball guy saves 500 kittens from a tree. 2,000. Oh, 2000. 2000. Over 2,000. <laughs> Over 2,000. <laughs> Minnie <laughs> Mini Minoso. <laughs> Minnie Minoso. <laughs> Greatest baseball player of all time. Exactly. Uh, well, it, we don't we don't have to finish right now, but the show the episode uh, the contest is over at least. So, so do we keep talking or do we go into the second bedroom and do hand jobs? Is like what what is next? <laughs> the hand job thing's uh, never been brought up. Well, I want to thank both of you for coming. Uh, this has been uh, great. Like C O M I N G. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Just making yeah, sure. I was like, um, I was like <laughs> <laughs> spelling me. What's would going you, on? Would you like to thank Sean McKenna? I don't want to thank or him. reprimand Sean McKenna. I, 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 you know, best bet with McKenna is to stay neutral and uh, not <laughs> rattle the cage too much. Uh, he's a tough nut to crack. He's a tough he's nut a to tough crack, nut and he's to he's crack. irritable at times. So you got to be careful. So you know. Yeah. Can't even come here. Like, what did he say? Oh, I had another pool day today. <laughs> another pool. The oh, day by the pool. In the pool all day long. Doing his backstroke. Yeah. Yeah. Getting some sun. I don't know. I, you know, what, I. What would McKenna have said? What would McKenna have said to these answers? For whatever, the, whatever the most obtuse argumentative answer possible <laughs> is. Yeah, he would. He would say the opposite of what the question actually was. Who is the funniest character in Slapshot? He would say like the owner of the Chiefs. Because she's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> totally true. The broadcaster guy. Yeah. He's in some scenes. Yeah. He's the funniest guy by far. Oh, he's wearing a fucking toupee. <laughs> but McKenna, why, had, do, why do you wear that rug? <laughs> McKenna has this way of like delivering, like just the way he speaks, uh, that makes me laugh. So he could have. What's the second it? question? Who's why? Well, was the best sitcom? Of the 80s, right? Oh, yeah. He would have said Blossom. <laughs> That's of the 90s. <laughs> exactly. He still would have said Blossom. <laughs> he liked Blossom? Maya Bialik. He used to watch that for her? Well, wasn't she the one who was uh, the kid doctor and would write on her computer at the end of every episode? Yeah, yeah. Or She was kind of like a female Doogie Hauser kind of thing. Doogie Hauser. I forgot what Doogie Hauser. Doogie Hauser. Yeah. Mm. Remember that guy? Oh, what would McKenna have said? Would, for music? Uh, Hairband? What would he have said for that? Oh, he would have an opinion. On yeah, that. he out of all of us, he would have been the most hair hair band hair bandy. He had the longish hair. Oh yeah, I'm he had long hair. Uh, oh, he actually, you kid. didn't choose Nirvana for. Her. Well, I guess hair band is like hair band's eighties. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, McKenna had the like long hair. Going. Was he all into like Alice in Chains and all that? Uh, his best friend Gabe was the guy Gabe. that would wear the like docks up to the knees. Leathered up, uh, leathered like, up. Irons. His best friend. <laughs> his best friend, Gabe? I've never heard of Gabe. No, oh, he's his best friend. Gabe was trouble. <laughs> Gabe one time jumped up. Uh, we had the uh, windows open on the school bus. Uh-huh. 
and I don't know if I don't even know if anybody said anything to him or not. But he based this guy was like in like grade twelve when we were in like grade nine, right? So everybody was pretty much scared of him. Mm-hmm. Not to mention he had had the outfit and the demeanor to go along with the reasons we were scared of him. He ran like sprinted at the bus, jumped up on the tire, grabbed the window, pulled himself up, and like started yelling at people on the bus. And I was, Gabe did. Gabe. Yeah. So it's like the Why are movie McKenna on the, the airplane and then well, there's the gremlin attacking the wing, kind of. Yes. Yep. Like that. He's the gremlin on the wing. There's like the twilight. Yeah, episode. exactly. Yeah. I think that they lived in the same building, so like they were buddies by... by uh, Association. Geography. By geography versus... So he could never get in trouble from Gabe, but then everybody else was scared of him. I don't know. His buddies. Okay. Uh, so he was a, he was a metalhead, kind of like really yeah. into it. Well, yeah. oh, McKenna? Yeah. Yeah, I think that was his music at the time. Right. And the rest of you guys not so big into that, eh? Like, not really. I think what... Um, I was really into real poppy, like, light 80s stuff that was really frivolous <laughs> and fun. Right, okay. <laughs> you argued well, for 90s. Uh, I was... Yeah, I'm kidding. Yeah. What have you been chosen for, like, history? Because you guys would have been, like, what, in the Nirvana area, era? And, like, Nirvana like, was when we were in grade 9. Like, Pearl Jam and all this Pearl kind Jam of, was grade 9 so as well. So the 80s yeah. would have been 4 to 14, right? So, like, I've, I feel like, like, in grade 7 and 8, we're... Like, at least I was... Like, GNR and stuff was 88, 89. Yeah. So we were starting to get GNR, Poison, stuff like, like that in middle school. Like, we're, we're, like, I don't know, Cox and I was listening to, like, Weird Al Yankovic, and, which is kind of everything. Oh, Weird Al but, is awesome. But not, like, oh, yeah, like, fucking like a DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince and, like, oh, when was, stupid uh, shit like that, right? When was Weird Al? When did he start? He was like 80s, early 90s. Yeah. All right. He, 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 was, was, he, had, he had a pretty no, long... No, he started tenure. early 80s because he, yeah. like, I think his, one of his first big hits See, was... See, without um, fair use, we like a surgeon, have done that. Which was... Uh, like a virgin. Which was 84, I think. Right. And then he did the Michael Jackson stuff and oh, all yeah. that. He did everything. Yeah. yeah. But he went for a long time, too, because he did... Um, like, he started getting into rap and stuff later on, too, right? Um, right. Uh, I walked through the shadow of the valley of death. What song was that? Like that was pretty. Uh, that was like late '90s, wasn't it? That's Dangerous Minds. That song. Coolio. Yeah, that, Coolio. 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 Right. Yeah. So. Uh, I, okay. So in sports, who would he have said is the ba- greatest baseball player ever? Oh, a hundred thousand percent, he would have said Ryan Braun. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. He Actually, loves Ryan Braun. I'm not sure why I didn't say Paul Duca. <laughs> you I, should have said Laduca. What happened? What happened? There? Oh, we would have heard your heart beating so fast it would have muffled the microphone. Right. <laughs> you sure? You and sure then, you wouldn't have fallen on the floor? Uh, what do we have in history? Most what? significant event of 1976. He wouldn't have said anything because. He no, did. he would have been like, I wasn't born, I don't know. He was born. The Sand Tower was made that year too. Apparently. He would have been like, I was just born, I couldn't pay attention, I don't know. Yeah, but he wouldn't have <laughs> he wouldn't have bothered to look anything up or do anything, so he wouldn't have had an answer. Okay, and wild card. Uh, oh, uh, the best toy for a young boy. <laughs> what is his answer for that? <laughs> huh? Video games. Yeah, that's a good. Pick. Yeah, probably. That's a good pick. Said something video games. Or just video games in general yeah, as yeah. a toy. Something. Yeah. yeah, he was all video games. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that was the first time I really got to be friends with him. Was going to his apartment building there at at uh, five and uh, whatever. Hamilton. You know the one I'm talking Hamilton about. Street. So yeah, yeah, Hamilton Street. Across from the and playing playing Tecmo Bowl. Oh yeah, that was the first yeah. time we really kind of got to be friends. So you two like met grade one, right? Grade yeah. two. We grade were two. Grade two. Grade two. Right. So you guys knew each other what for five years before McKenna showed yeah, up, he was right? Grade seven. Yeah, because you guys went when the like, school. No, the schools up. merged. Oh, they merged. Well, we we went to Balaclava and Victoria, which were Carlisle schools. Uh huh. And then everybody from Waterdown and Carlisle went to Flamborough Center, which was halfway. For just seven and eight. Right. Okay. And then everybody went from from to Waterdown High. High. All right. Yeah, so that's when we met, like, like we, Rob and I met Dowding and Stevens and McKenna. Were they all friends before those guys? No, they were at different schools, so somewhat, but yeah. I Dowding was, and McKenna knew each other. Dowding and McKenna and they Stevens did. and G knew each other. Yep. Um, okay. So then, but then Rob and I knew like Martin. Um, I don't know who else. You probably don't know anybody. You yeah, know these, else. Well, like a lot of the names are familiar to me. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's good. You guys have been like lifelong friends. That's yep. uh, you know that's kind of rare. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, that doesn't really happen, you know, where you where you meet somebody that young. Like Eamon doesn't even have friends, <laughs> like, and he's uh, only thirteen. Like I have friends. Well, you have. I, <laughs> I didn't mean to say you don't have friends, but like you I was waiting for that. The way you yeah. phrased that, yeah, I, know, I didn't phrase it well. Uh, what not a good dad. What I meant to say well, was the, the the flip side of it too, though, is like Rob and I went to school together in grade two on Long Island. And we were friends along the way, but I don't know that we were like best friends. Like, we weren't like no, a tight group. We weren't even in the same group of friends yeah, until not high school. Really? Yeah. Um, like I, we got together sometimes to play catch and play baseball and stuff. Yeah, but, but you were like a Matt Hodgson, Jamie yeah, Sharp, yeah, yeah. Todd so was, Smiley guy. Yeah, and, and then it wasn't. And so I was a go home alone and ride my bike guy. So right. well, and Rob <laughs> lived in kind of even though Carlisle is really small, it's kind of the sticks when you're that young. Yeah. Like. The, the next neighbor is like a good chunk. Of the I way certainly down. wasn't ever going to be allowed to ride my bike to Rob's. If he was allowed to ride his bike in a car, I don't know. But I, I mean, I don't think I would have been able to. How long would that have taken you to get it from like where you lived to where he lived? Half hour. On a bike. On, on a, a bike. bike? Yeah. yeah, that's a good track on a bike. Yeah. Well, yeah. especially before grade seven, right? Yeah, right. I'd say, yeah. like, having to think back, I'd say it's seven, eight kilometers probably. Right. That would have been very different because, like, what I grew up in was more like this, right? Like, uh, sure. yeah. suburbs yeah. and, like, every house is, like, a bunch of kids and you all play on the street together. So yeah. it was kind of a different vibe. What I meant to say, Eamon, was you don't, like, ha- okay, like, how many friends from kindergarten do you still have? Zero. Right. How many ki- friends from grade two? One. Which one? Ethan. Okay. All right, so what you know, like it doesn't happen. Like, it doesn't might, happen. It doesn't happen really anymore. No, you we're. Know? I, and I, but I think I think Waterdown is unique in that because there are a bunch of different groups of friends that are still friends, well beyond university, well beyond kind of life. Because it's kind of small townish. Is that? I, I think that's what the deal is, right? Yeah. I, I'm sure other small towns have a similar kind of scenario. Um, yeah, because you guys are like, even though you're not even from the same towns, right? Like technically speaking, he was a consent. Well, uh, he was in town. I was out of town. Right. Oh, yeah, we were both in Carlisle. You're more from like you're more from like civilization. I'm in a, right? I'm in a, I was in a subdivision. He was basically on a farm, right? Right. Yeah, we were rubbing sticks together. <laughs> <laughs> Those kind of sticks. Thanks, Dave. Oh, okay, great. All right, guys. Well, that's we're why at... Rob went into early puberty. <laughs> he oh he hit puberty early. Yeah, early. Oh, that's an interesting yeah, story. Rob, Rob hit early. <laughs> he puberty. loves telling this story. I, I remember do he back remember. hair really early. You don't remember this? <laughs> I don't. For real? You you love like telling a big it. Deal. It was like a big deal in grade four. Actually, grade four we were buddies because we went to. Uh, Oh, Camp Shalom. Yeah, Camp Shalom. Mr. Like, Dijkstra. Uh, yeah. Hot dogs on the way. We're uh, we're in a split. This is cryptic. We're in a, <laughs> <laughs> we're in a split four five class. Yeah. <clears throat> and there was only like I don't know ten grade five kids. So we like just by definition, I think like it was like me, you, Smiley. Yeah, it wasn't a lot. Um, like Paula Dodman, I think was in that class, but there wasn't a lot of grade five. So um, it was, and, and actually that. Great. We were in grade five, and the trip we went, we went up early to help. I don't know why. Set up. Set up. But but we went on a grade four trip when we were in grade five, just because we were in the four five split, mm-hmm. which was pretty cool. Double dip. Double dip, man. Yeah, Double yeah. dip. That's all right. I don't even remember the grade four version of that when we were in grade four. Like the only memories I have of that are like the grade five version of that. Hmm. Because I was in Mrs. Binkley's class in grade four. Hmm. I don't remember. I don't remember that. Hmm. You also made fun of me in grade four for the. Uh, oh yeah, playing the piano. Music videos. Well, we did. Uh, we did. Uh, what do you call it? Limp sync uh, videos. And I, I wasn't a very good actor. <laughs> no, so I was playing a piano like this. But it wasn't a piano. It was a xylophone. Well, yeah, it was a xylophone. Was <laughs> you played the xylophone by touching it. Was it was meant to be a piano. Okay. But because it, it was a music video. Right. And we we did smoking. They did the, Dire Straits. We did smoking in the boys' room. <laughs> I thought you guys did Dire Straits. Yeah, by Dire Straits. Oh, okay. Okay. Smoking yeah. In the boys yeah. Room. yeah. <laughs> smoking in the boys' so, room. So so Rob was giving you a hard time about that. I think everybody made fun. I did Brian Adams. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, you all had to do this. this we all. Like, yeah, we well, all. Everyone saw. did it. I I did it with like two other people. I think maybe Hodgson and Sharp. Maybe. I remember Sharp for sure. Uh, I kind of yeah. They never did that for us. I went solo. Yeah. Did you? That's you my style. Yeah. See, see, solo. Yeah. Not the boy band. He's Time. a solo artist. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a solo <laughs> artist. <laughs> In more ways than one. <laughs> All right. Well, it, we got to wrap up the show. Um, and and uh, thanks 
to both of you coming. Uh, fuck McKenna for not showing up, but you know, it's fuck shit, McKenna. Shit happens, and I it's totally cool. So uh, I'm pretty excited to see your download numbers go through the roof. Now. I know we're gonna get all those 1976ers. Amazing. They're gonna be on this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We should. People are like, those were the days. <laughs> <laughs> Back in 1976. Yeah, Chris Seymour would be happy. He'd be like, oh, my 76ers are I'm going to send this to Teresa Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> She's somebody from our grade. Oh, I'm sure she'll love it. Yeah. Who doesn't? Who doesn't love a great edition of Trivial Debates? The ultimate pop culture challenge. Anyway, I want to thank everyone. Uh, I'm Dave Mater. I'm Amy Mater. Thanks for having us, Davey. I'm Rob. Barry Gilbert, a.k.a. Jeff. Yep. And uh, we'll see you on the flip side. See you later.